May the fourth be with you. Happy Monday. Um, if you're watching this today, if not, sorry, I read this on May 4th. <laughs> uh, we're reading Wish Tree today, and we're almost done with the book. And as some of you are like, I look different. I trimmed my beard way down. It was driving me nuts. I'll let it grow back out. Don't worry. Um, so we're on chapter 44 and page 173. And we're going to read a few chapters and see what is happening. Um, we left off with Francesca nodded. She patted my trunk. Yeah, craziness. Can't believe I put up with it for this long. She's going to be cutting down the tree like that next day. So um, we got to see what happens. But it is wishing day as well. Early that evening, Francesca stopped by the blue and green house. My houses. One with a black door, one with a brown door, one with a yellow mailbox, one with a red mailbox. She knocked on each door. She explained her plans for me. Both sets of parents said they understood. They would be sorry to see me go, but it would be a relief to see an end of wishing day, wouldn't it? And my absence would mean more sunlight in their living rooms and fewer acorns underfoot. Okay, at least let me make a deposit on her parents, Bungo grumbled. More sunlight than nerve. How about less oxygen, people? Less beauty? Thank you for defending me, Bungo, I said, but no depositing. Samar and Stephen were not so understanding. They ran after Francesca as she crossed the lawn. Samar pulled on her sweater. You have to listen to us, Samar. You can't cut down the tree. Samar said, you can't cut down the tree. I can't, Francesca inquired. And why is that, dear? Because, Stephen said, panting, it's alive. I'm quite aware of that, Francesca said. It's a common trait of trees. She paused, peering down at the ribbon around Samar's neck. Why, I know that key, she said. I recognize the ribbon. So she does know the key. A crow gave it to me. No kidding, smart birds, crows. Samar slipped the ribbon over her head and handed the key to Francesca. Oh, I don't want that old thing, she said, giving it back. You can keep it. It just made me remember. It, it's not important. It opens a diary. My great-grandmother Maeve kept a journal after she moved here. So that's what it's for, Samar said. Where is it, Stephen? The journal. Attic, maybe, or no? It's probably in the shed behind Samar's house. Got a lot of old family stuff stashed away in there. She gave a wry smile, weary smile, unless it's all floated away. Backyard's pretty wet now, which, by the way, is one of the reasons it's time to th this tree to say goodbye. Samara wiped away tears. You don't understand. This tree, it's almost like it's human. That's sweet, Francesca patted Samara's head, but honey, it's just a tree. She squared her shoulders. Now I must go feed Lewis and Clark. I can hear them complaining from all the way over here, and I've got a busy day ahead of me tomorrow. As she moved to leave, Stephen stepped in front of her. Before you go, he said in his firm voice, just listen. He turned to me. Say something, he instructed. Please, tree, Samar pleaded. I kept silent. What more was there to say? Francesca looked from Stephen to Samar and back again. Children, she said, perhaps those video games you like to play ate your brain. <laughs> talk, tree, Stephen said. Silence. It can talk, Samar told Francesca. Real words. It tells a story about Maeve. Francesca, for just a moment, hesitated. She looked at me. You mean metaphorically, of course. The tree seemed to talk to you. The leaves whispered and so on. It told us about the hollow and the baby. Francesca blinked. The baby? Yes, Samar said, the abandoned baby. Again, Francesca paused. Of course I've told that family story before. You probably heard it from a neighbor. Stephen looked, shook his head. We heard it from the tree. Oh my, said Francesca. She waved a hand in front of her face. You're wearing me out, you two. I'm so very glad your my parenting days are behind me. Listen here. You get a good night's sleep, understand? Or maybe some counseling. As quickly as she could, Francesca made her way across the lawn, her shoes caked with mud. Francesca, Stephen called. It's just a tree, dears. Repeat after me. It's just a tree. I was wondering if we could look at that for that diary. She glanced over her shoulder. Maeve's journal? Be my guess. If it's not underwater by now. She held up her palms. Just no more tree craziness, you hear? When Francesca was back at her house, Stephen and Samara looked at me accusingly. Why didn't you talk? Samara demanded. Because it was foolish. Because I wasn't supposed to. Because. 
Looking defeated, Stephen and Samar trudged away. They hadn't gone far when Samar paused and turned to Stephen. Something happened today, she said. People at school were being weird, talking about me, whispering, passing notes. Even she, she narrowed her eyes. You didn't tell anyone, did you, about the what happened last night? Of course not. And I wonder what's going on. You're probably imagining things. I don't think so. I mean, it means the people talking about me, being mean, but this was different. Things aren't always what they seem, Stephen smiled sympathetically. Come on, let's go check out the shed. I watched the two of them head towards Samar's backyard. They were talking, laughing, becoming friends, perhaps. Maybe I had been so foolish after all. It's kind of nice to be becoming friends. All right, that was a really long chapter, so let's do one more. Chapter 45. Trees don't sleep, not like people do, or animals, but we do rest. Unfortunately, that night, rest eluded me. I was filled with questions about the coming day, of course, but most of all, I didn't want to miss a moment of what little life I had left. I wanted to drink in the stars. And you can kind of see this page, it's all black. It's pretty cool. See all the stars at night. I wanted to feel the fuzzy wings of the owlets. I wanted to stretch my roots just a tiny bit farther before the night was through. I wanted to indulge in some quiet contemplation about life and love and what it all meant. I wanted to philosophize. I've been thinking, I said to Bongo. There's no point in my worrying about tomorrow. It will come soon enough. Red, Bongo said. Too much, wise old tree. Bongo Paj. She looked at me for a long time. Never, she said. Never ever too much, wise old tree. Bongo settled on a home plate. The word world was quiet and calm. Want to hear a tree joke, I asked. Is it funny? Probably not, I admitted. Then probably no. What's a tree's least favorite month? I don't know, what month? September, I paused, because you see, Red Bongo interrupted, as always, no need to explain. We didn't speak much after that. Turned out I didn't need to talk about life and love and what it all meant. It was enough to just watch the sky freckle with stars, to smell the sweet wet earth, to listen to the beating hearts of the little ones I could keep safe, at least for one more night. So I guess wishing days tomorrow. Alright, let me see how long the next chapter is. Yeah, we're going to stop here, and then we'll do one more. Next time we'll read 46 and 47, and then we'll probably do 48, 49, 50, 51. So we'll probably read three chapters next time. So that's it for now. We'll start with 46 next time, um, and then we'll continue. We're almost done. See you next time.